Uh, I'm Harry Chotner, Will Forte, Ron York. So thank you for being here, and thank you, you guys, for bringing us this film. Um, we we'll do a little discussion up here and then open it up to you. Um, for those of you who don't know, Will's born and raised in Northern California. In high school, he was a swimmer, varsity football, class president, and voted best personality. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, then UCLA, uh, did work with the Groundlings, eight years on Saturday Night Live. Um, yes. Uh, Worked in a variety of films, as we mentioned, that one of them is here, McGruber, which is just terrific. Um, in addition to Nebraska this year, he's also got A Life of Crime coming out, which is based on an Elmore Leonard novel, and he's in Peter Bogdanovich's uh, next film, She's Funny That Way. Um, Ron Yerkes is also a California boy. He was student body president of his high school. He wanted me to be sure and say that. Um, uh, went to Stanford, uh, that did graduate work in history at UC Santa Cruz, um, worked for a variety of production companies, and was also, spent a couple years working in a high school with at-risk teenagers. Um, started uh, Bonafide Productions with his partner Albert Berger and they produced such films as King of the Hill, um, Election, uh, Alexander Payne's film, Little Miss Sunshine, Cold Mountain, Little Children, which is a remarkable film if you haven't seen it, and Charlie Countryman, which is here at the festival. So I thought, why don't we start with you guys each saying how you got involved with this project and Ryan, do you want to start since you were with it the longest? Well, 10 years ago, um, a uh, friend who's in a uh, foundation, Liberty Hill Foundation, that I've been involved with told me at a reception that she had been working in Seattle uh, on a um, local television show, and one of the writers there named Bob Nelson wrote his first screenplay, a spec screenplay, um, which was Nebraska. And she gave it to us, and we um, were really admiring of its dry wit, its kind of undercurrent of deep emotional currents, and um, just how strong the voice was. And uh, we thought, well, this would be a very good low-budget film, and we were pursuing it that way, maybe it'd be a $2 million film. But we sent it to Alexander Payne um, because we, course like his work a lot and we produced election but we thought he'd be maybe a godfather or perhaps a most executive producer but because it was titled Nebraska almost entirely took place in Nebraska we thought he'd have some response to it and he did he called us a couple days later and he said he had an idea for a director and we said who's that and he said uh, that would be me so that was um, just about exactly ten years ago um, the reason it took so long is Alexander didn't want to do three road movies in a row, and he was just doing sideways. And then I think all of us, including Alexander, thought there'd be another film in the next year or two, and that would be the one in between. But it actually took like seven years before The Descendants got going. So um, last year, about this time, we were in production uh, finally, and um, it's, uh, as you could see, a Paramount film, but it was a long journey to uh, get it as a black and white Paramount film shot almost entirely in Nebraska with Will Forte. <laughs> <laughs> People always talk about, oh, the budget must have taken a hit by doing it in black and white, not as much as doing it with Will Forte. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I was, uh, uh, I just read the script probably a year and a half ago, and uh, loved the script, felt this connection to the character, uh, but just thought there is no way I would ever get this part. Like, it just realistically, I know my place, you know, I, I know, it just, it just, but I just, I love the script so much, I thought, what the heck, I will put myself on, on tape and tape myself doing some of the scenes sent it in and just forgot about it. Uh, just because it, it, it just, I just knew it was not something that was realistic. Um, and then four and a half months later, out of the blue, got a call 
that Alexander Payne had seen it and liked it enough to call me in in person, which was the most exciting thing of all time. I just, you know, I, I don't have any kind of formal dramatic training, and to have that kind of positive feedback was incredibly exciting. But I, I still didn't think it would go any further than going to meet with them in person. I was just excited to get that chance uh, and very nervous. But went in there, ran through the scenes with him. He was big, gave positive feedback again, which was really exciting. But I just did, I, I don't know. I, I, a month later, I, he called me to say I got the part, and it was just the most unexpected, uh, exciting thing. Uh, he made a good choice. Um, actually, I want to I want to ask you something about about your performance. One of the things I think that's hardest to do for, especially for a male actor, is to anchor a film in which your character is mostly passive. And for much of the film, you're letting your dad dictate what happens. There's a few moments, but it's very hard to do what you've done, I think, um, which is to engender a kind of energy and empathy while still being essentially passive and in many ways a kind of inadequate character. And so I'm wondering, what was your preparation for the role? How did you sort of prepare for it? How did you conceive of your character? Uh, I mean, the, the script is so well written, it, just the character really was laid out uh, from, from the get-go, so it, it uh, I don't know, there was just something about it, the, the, the different family relationships I had. I didn't, I didn't my family's nothing like that. Thank uh, <laughs> God. Um, but uh, I had, it, it just, I don't know, I'm sure, I, I think, a lot of you probably related to a lot of these uh, relationships in here and probably have family structures that are way different. There was just something about the set of relationships I had um, that made it all make sense to me. There was, my, my grandpa on my mom's side was, was really similar to, uh, I mean, with, it was a man of few words, lovably gruff, um, and so I knew I could kind of how that kind of communication was to be, you know, frustrated by somebody but but love them very deeply. Um, so it just made sense. Um, every movie set is different. Um, how would give us a sense of what what it was like doing an Alexander Payne movie, doing it in Nebraska, doing it with limited budget and resources um, for both, you know, as a producer and as a central actor, uh, what was a great day, what was a god-awful day, what was it like? Well, there weren't any god-awful days. I mean, Alexander is such a experienced, uh, knows exactly the kind of film he wants to make. It was actually um, very pleasant from a producer's point of view. We've done films of, you know, 20% the budget that are a thousand times more work or anxiety. It's really an Alexander Payne film. And so, you know, we had a great time scouting through uh, Montana, Wyoming, North Dakota, where like seven days of it are shot. And then these small towns, like the main town is called Plainview. Um, just going there every day, because there's no place to stay in that town, so you had to drive 45 minutes or an hour. You got to know almost everybody in the town. and. Um, I think we all had a great time, and there was, you know, probably the most surprising thing to me is that those people in, in, in the five or seven towns were not phased or, you know, that taken with a movie company coming in. It was like, yeah, okay, um, you know, I'm going back to the bowling alley. It just didn't seem to be something that they should be at all starstruck, and, and it made it very easy. It was, it was, um, I, I love just a great communal atmosphere. Yeah, Alexander is he. Uh, a lot of the people on his crew have worked with him for most of his movies. So, so, uh, and it just he is so confident and relaxed, and that just bleeds over into everybody. So it just everyone is really friendly and um, just very supportive. It was a great, great. Um, 
great experience. So fun. And, and but, but my favorite, the, the worst days for me, I had the flu um, when I had to get uh, wrestled to the ground. And I could barely, it was one of those things where it hurt to even stand up. And, and so to have to get tackled was a real bummer. Um, and, uh, but still, it was, hey, I get to be in an Alexander Payne movie. It was even having the flu, and it, it, everything was the, the best. Oh, but there was, I will also say, there was a very special thing uh, in this movie. At the end of all that, we, we finished all the, uh, the scenes with dialogue. And then we made the road trip from Billings to Lincoln at the very end. Um, and, and how we did that was Alexander Payne, after about Schmidt, he purchased the RV that Jack Nicholson had driven around. This is, I'm being honest, this is true. And, and, uh, and he had this contraption where he mounted a camera to the front of the RV. And then we just did that road trip filming the car from that RV, and it was such a wonderful way to end that experience. To, to, all the pressure was kind of off, because all you did all the really hard dialogue scenes, and just, just to transition out with all these people you had become really wonderful friends with, so it was great. I gather one of the things Alexander did was spend a lot of time finding non-professionals to be in the movie, and a lot of the roles, as, as you may or may not be able to tell, are not professional actors and from both from a producer and an actor's point of view what's it like working with so many non-professionals with what's the good and the bad of it well you know it wasn't from my point of view any difficulty they were so amazing like Aunt Betty or whatever just standing there and never having acted before and you know the, Aunt Betty was the just where do you think when you've got the bee in your butt? Yeah, exactly. Well, but not that long. <laughs> She'd never acted before, and she's so good. Yeah, and, uh, and the West End Doors. They had yeah, West End Doors. I always feel bad because that woman is great, but then never mind. Never mind. There's the, the, the dialogue right before it says, "Oh, she was a real pig," and then you see her, and she's this sweet woman. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I didn't write the script, so... Okay, sorry, I'm... That's a sidetrack. Go ahead. Oh. It was... Uh, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, it was wonderful working with these people, because not being... Not having experience with this type of acting, it's just different. You know, I'm used to these big, broad characters and, and wacky characters, and so uh, to, to act in a more realistic way. I learned a lot from these people who were just coming in. It, it was, uh, in a way, it just taught me not to try to act too much, if that makes sense. The, the, the script does so much of the work for you, and I don't know, just you know, try to be in the moment, not try to make something out of it. Just, just uh, I don't know, I, you know, I'm still yeah. figuring out. One thing I'm still all about. Being in Nebraska or in the Midwest last night, we showed the film in New York, and someone came up to the table, you know, a very New Yorker kind of person, and was saying how depressing that must be living there and all that stuff. And, and you know, I, I don't know any people like that, but you know, the, the amazing thing was that not only were the non-professional actors great, but people like offered their house to be like the holding tank for extras or to put up. Um, our interns, like, room and board for nothing. He kept wondering, kind of from a Hollywood point of view, why are you doing that? You know, and, and it was amazing generosity. And it, 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 uh, last night, I surprisingly was watching a, a description of all the appeal of living there, even in that main town. Everyone gathers together at six in the morning. There's a four-lane bowling alley, but they serve breakfast. And then you go do something of your work, and you come back to one of the places for lunch, and there's three bars. And it's kind of a cohesive community, and I didn't feel at all depressed. I mean, I didn't personally, but I didn't feel they were either. Uh, you know, speaking of this sort of good experience that you had there, um, Alexander Payne's movies have been both celebrated and criticized for this portrayal of the American heartland, and that. It's sort of, in some ways, this movie is kind of a bouquet, even a love letter, 
to these people who are often without guile, without pretension, they're basically in many ways nurturing, happy for Woody and stuff like that. But I'm sure some people, some critics will write about this movie as Alexander Payne, yet again, has portrayed Midwesterners as often stupid, venal, um, uh, naive. The, the movie's gorgeous. The Midwest doesn't look gorgeous in this movie. And so, you know, his movies, this movie, I think will be seen in both ways. And I'm wondering, do you guys think you've made a movie that in one way or another is some kind of comment on the American heartland? I, uh... Alexander is a very proud Nebraskan. He loves his home state. He still lives there for half the year. There are some crazy people in this movie, but there are crazy people everywhere. I mean, he knows this is the state he knows, so he he's creating stories about his area. But I mean, you could just as easily have done this in Florida and had crazy people. To, there are crazy people everywhere and wonderful people everywhere. Virginia, and just this, just this story happens to be no. It's all good here. <laughs> it's the only state you could not make a movie. Uh, but yeah, I, you know, I, I, I hope that that people realize he he loves these people, and, and he, this is this is the area he knows. That this is where the stories are set. But you could set them anywhere. I, I, I would think. I, I, a lot more messed up people in California than, than something. <laughs> you know, it, one way to characterize this movie, it's it's minimalist. I mean, it's it's shot in black and white. It's got naturalistic acting. There's no fancy camera work. There's no fancy editing. It's it's really a, sort of a minimalist artistic achievement and. You know, I'm wondering, when you're making the movie, do you think that we're doing less is more kind of film? And I'm also wondering, did you ever have the feeling, either of you, that I wish we'd had another $10 million, because we could have done something more that we weren't able to do? Uh, well, the, the, the real glory of this film, from the script stage, was how simple and spare and minimalist it was. I mean, all those silences were really in the screenplay. And when we read it, just the idea that people would watch TV and say a word every 20 seconds, or, you know, he's still on that Buick, or... You know, that, that's what we quoted in 2003 when we first read the script. You know, um, those cars will run forever. You know, what happened to it? It stopped running. You know, that, it was, it was that, that's why he's sitting around. Uh, that and, and really on this film, because it was in black and white, the budget came way down um, because just the way the business is, you can't, Paramount can't put the film with their international distributors or their TV deals, but I don't think the film needed any more money than it, than it, than it has. I really think it's the complete film he wanted to make. Um, when you guys look at it tonight, or you've seen it a lot since you finished it, um, what, are there particular moments where you think, both as a producer and an actor, I wish I'd had another take. I, that scene doesn't look as good as I wanted it to. Um, and, and are there things when you look at the movie that you go, this is so much better, either me or this film, than I really thought it was when we were making it? I didn't have any takes at all, so. <laughs> it's, it's, it takes a while to get used to seeing yourself, and especially this character is probably more like me than anything, just who I am as a person. So it's so a lot of times you feel very vulnerable, and it's hard to watch sometimes. Uh, and there are stupid little things that I critique in my own performance that hopefully nobody is thinking about at all. But but like, you know. Dumb little things like when I'm reading that newspaper, uh, when, when she's showing the, the, the old newspaper of him getting shot down in uh, Korea. Um, and I feel like when I watch myself in that scene, it feels like I'm reading the newspaper like this. 
And it's like, you know, I don't, if you, I, none of you probably noticed it. Did anybody think I was looking all over the place? <laughs> Thank you. I, I did. And, and now I've, but you learn to just let go of it. You, you know, we've, uh, it, it's, it's, you know, and some of the things that, that bug me, uh, I'll tell Bruce, oh, that, you know, I, I feel weird in that take. And he says, oh, that's one of my favorite things. And, you know, it's just, it, you can't accurately judge yourself. And, and overall, as I've gotten, loosened the reins and, on, on it and, and cut myself a, a break as I watch it, it's, it's I'm, I'm so proud of how this movie turned out and just so proud to be a part of it. Um, you know, you mentioned that you were sort of, it was the kind of acting you hadn't done before. And I'm wondering, was there some point during the film when you sort of felt like, I really can do this? Was there a time when you sort of made a leap of sort of confidence or awareness or something that I belong here, really do belong? Uh, well, I mean, right after I got the, got cast in it, it was, exciting, an excitement I had never known, and then a self-doubt I had never known. Um, and there was a, a long period of time between when I got cast and when we started, and it, you know, I, I am a crazy person, basically. I'm an overthinker. I uh, go, go to worst case scenarios, and, and as I were, as I was hearing more and more about the film as it came together, and oh, it's, you know, I knew Alexander Payne, I knew this beautiful script, then Bruce Dern is uh, playing my dad, and then I find out about June Squibb, and then Bob Odenkirk, Stacy Keach, and I was just like, this is all coming together really wonderfully, don't ruin this movie. And, uh, and then when I got there, we had a, a week of uh, rehearsal time, where we didn't really rehearse at all. All we did was we drove around to different locations. Um, at, at June and Bruce and I went with Alexander, and we we looked at you know, we just got to know the 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 Nebraska area and and uh, that's a horrible way to put it. The <laughs> Nebraska area, is a better way. Um, and got to be we got to get to know each other. And so by the time we actually started working together, it was, you know, they, they made me so much more relaxed. And, and then when you just get down to the actual work of it, it's, it, the script is just so well written, it does so much of the work for you. So no, no there's, there, I, I am an overthinker, so I will always find things to be nervous about. Um, but those guys were able to just treat me so wonderfully. Bruce was so good to me. He was just the best buddy and, and uh, teacher I could have asked for. And, and it, it, you know, I, I, he just made it so easy. So easy. He's great. In one area, though, uh, well, you're not an overthinker. When we flew here today, we were on that little plane from LaGuardia to Charlotte. Uh, yeah, Charlotte. So. And um, um, I was looking out the window, dying with each storm cloud that we flew through. And Will had two jackets over his head and slept the whole way. So <laughs> it was a, a calmness. <laughs> One last question, then we'll open it up. Um, I think a lot of us really admire Bruce Stern and sort of have high expectations, and he was there, but I think a lot of us, certainly I was, was surprised by June Squibb, and yet her performance was just astonishing, and, and does so much to set a tone of both pathos and humor at the same time, and um, I was wondering, what was it like working with her, and did you all have the sense that she was really delivering this performance that was going to be surprising? Well, um, you know, she's great. You know, one thing, just we were lucky because we had kind of a collective communal atmosphere. We, we, the, the film was centered out of, out of uh, uh, Norfolk, uh, Nebraska, which was the only town that had like lodges big enough. 
and most of us stayed in the same lodge, and it was kind of a glorified motel. Um, so when it first started and like June came, um, she was doing her own laundry, and uh, I'd gotten a second-hand rhubarb pie and given it to her as kind of a joke, but she ate a slice every day. I was hopeful that she survived it, which she did. So it had that feeling like this is just an earthy, unpretentious time. And, and you know, her first day of shooting was in the cemetery, and she just sort of, uh, you know, brought it all. Yeah, she is the exact opposite of the character she plays. It's such a testament to her acting because she's very sweet and loving, and, and then, and, and same with Bruce. Bruce is the exact opposite. He is such a chatty Cathy. He just will, he will, tells the best stories, and he's vibrant, and then when they, when the, turn, the camera turns on, they both just transform into these completely different people. And she also, I don't know if people know, know that she was uh, Jack Nicholson's wife in About Schmidt, which is also, which is so different from this role and so different from who she is as a person. She just, God, she's amazing. Yes. Are you gonna open up the question? Yes. Because I just want to say one thing. If I'm just, uh, as maybe I tried to say before the film started, you know, I'm really uh, grateful to Jody and Wes and the whole Virginia Film Festival because for several reasons, we had done a lot of planning to sort of escape this kind of predetermined path we're on. And so um, Will and I, and, and actually the uh, director um, of Charlie Countryman saw this as a, a romp um, and we thoroughly intend to enjoy the next two days here. Um, but the other personal side of it, if, alluding to uh, Bruce, is that usually when there's a Q&A um, and there's two or three actors, you know, all the questions are for the actors. Um, and Bruce is such a master storyteller that often one or two stories is, you know, uh, all there's time for. Um, and um, my partner and I have a couple times been able to sit on a Q&A like this and never be asked a question nor say a word. So I'm really grateful. <laughs> scripted or was there improvisation either in rehearsal or when you were actually shooting? Uh, it's all the script. I mean there might be five words different uh, usually because somebody screwed up their lines and maybe Alexander liked just how it came out. Uh, but but it, the script was just so beautifully written. It's got Bob Nelson yeah, that, that there, that, you know, there's no need to improvise it, would just do it to service. Um, yes, sir. Oh, yeah, there was, there was a, the, the noise at the beginning, uh, apparently there was a piece of tape uh, that got into the sound drum. And I am sorry, because I taped the sound drum. <laughs> so, I wanted to start low and then go up from there. Uh, no, thanks sorry. for sticking through that. We were dying in the back there for a while. It was not intended. It's not on the film, of course. Yes, ma'am. really as decrepit as he seemed in this movie. No, he's, he is uh, very energetic. He still runs all the time. He's a, a, a long distance runner, and he goes out for runs all the time. Uh, Alexander also requested that both of us um, not do any kind of grooming uh, during the process. So he, his nose hairs just went nuts. <laughs> He now has him trimmed back like a gentleman, and uh, he, he looks great. But but yeah, he, he he you know he really just put a lot into the performance so he was able to make himself more. Yes. Yeah. Um, yes. 
missed the road trip at the end of the shooting. How long did it actually take you to drive? <laughs> One of the third brother who wants to know how long the road trip actually uh, took. Well, I mean, we were stopping all over the place, so it was it was four or five days. <laughs> I think I could. I'm a, a speedy driver, so I think I could have done pretty fast. Uh, yes, ma'am. Are you back with your girlfriend at the end of the? I don't know. I don't know. I have hung out with her since the since the movie. She's wonderful, Missy Doty. She was in Sideways also. She uh, uh, plays the, well, kind of a risque part in Sideways. She's a woman having sex with a guy at the end of the movie, uh, um, and she's naked. Uh, yes. Uh, yes, sir. The back. How much of the uh, of the sets in those Midwest towns had to be set, especially for like the night scenes? Um, what, what was that like? How much of that? I'm sorry. How of the sets of, of those scenes in those small towns, especially at night. How much? How much did the, did the atmosphere have to be uh, set to make those scenes? Question. Did we hear the question? The question was for the those towns that they went through. Did a lot have to be modified to? for night shooting or whatever, to make them look the way they did? Or was it? Not very much, not very much. It, it, uh, it, a couple signs, were, I, I think the Blinker Tavern was not the Blinker, Blinker Tavern, so that was a, a different sign. Uh, but, but everything else, it, it was, there was not much that, that was uh, fakey sign making and stuff. Yeah, I mean, there was a great production designer, Dennis Washington, but actually he just tweaked things. And, um, you know, the, the, the main town of Hawthorne is actually Plainview, and except, I guess, for maybe legal reasons, we could have called it Plainview and not done much of anything to it. It's, it's very close. But, you know, the bars, just to test our IQ or something, the blinker bar from one town be, that was actual blinker became the blinker in another town, and we couldn't quite, it was hard to figure out where you were going. But they were real, real places. And a lot of the people that were in those scenes are regulars at those bars. Yeah. <laughs> That's what Alexander is, you know, goes and scouts it out beforehand and will, you know, tell them, hey, come back here this certain day. Uh, he, re he really spent months and months and months, I think, doing these, this location scouting. Yes. was a set of ideas that were developed by Lars von Trier and a few other Scandinavian directors originally that when you make films, there should be no artificial light, there should be no music that's not actually in the scene like playing on the radio, actors do their own costumes, no dolly shots, um, that you make the movie as completely natural as possible. And this woman was saying, and if you've ever seen those sort of dogma films, they do have a particular look. And this woman was sort of asking, did you guys really do that? Harry teaches film at NYU. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Good, Ron, do you want to say was, was there, this was not like a dog film. You did use artificial light. Yeah, you did. Yeah, yes. No, I'm sorry if that wasn't clear. Yeah, we, we didn't adhere to any of those standards, but, it, you know, we take it as a very positive comment that it all looks so, you know, naturally existing in the, in the daily course of life. Yes, sir. <laughs> Yes. 
That is, I think. Right? That is a, a made up one. Yeah, that one that always is, stuck with me. What was your thought on that? He was asking about the monster tan sign in the. Uh, uh, my, my real question was because we shot it black and white, uh, film 35mm, and I looked at it and assumed because it was sort of lively graininess. He had all these choices of like video and other inexpensive ways to go. Was the reason why he did it in mock film because it's like a tradition or because there's like a beauty to it or a thing? You don't have to be with this many. It, it was not shot on film. Oh, it was, the, the question was, it's a movie shot in black and white and paid it a compliment by saying it looks like it was shot on film. And if so, were there, what were the reasons for that? And Ron, you were saying about what it was shot. <laughs> yeah, it was shot on the Alexa studio system. It was shot digitally. But it took a lot more work, I mean, because it's only going to be in black and white and the color schemes and wardrobe and walls and everything had to be, you know, calculated as they will look on a digital black and white image. Um, yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Forte. Uh, yes. From a comic background, you're pretty much straight man in this in this film. That top it was it tough to to play that way. Uh, question was with a comic background, was it hard to play? Quote, straight man in this. Um, I, I came through the Groundling system in Los Angeles, which is a, a sketch comedy and improv comedy uh, uh, theater. And so it, it, you have a group of friends, and, and sometimes you're the crazy character, and somebody's your straight man, and then you'll turn around, and you'll be the straight man to their crazy character. So, so you know, I, I have at least that. Uh, you know, in SNL, you play the straight man from time to time too. So, so you have some experience, but this was just a, a different level of, of straight man. Uh, um, but it, it, at least there was a little confidence going in, knowing that that you know I had done it before, I guess. But it was it still was really scary. Um, oh wait, there's there's somebody, back somebody here. way in the back. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Um, Will, what got you into uh, looking into doing films like this, and um, how specifically does the acting experience differ for you from your previous work and stuff like SNL and Gruber and things like that? Uh, this just came out of nowhere. It was not a, a planned, strategic move into drama. It, it, I, you know, I. I Still can't believe I got to be in this, but I, it, I never, I would never rule out trying anything. I just never thought I'd get a chance to do something like this. So it, it was so exciting to not only get a chance to do a drama, but to do it with Alexander Payne. I just would have never thought I'd get that chance in my lifetime. So it was wonderful. It, uh, as far as the the differences, it's just uh, I think I talked said earlier, alluded to it, but it's it's just you know. It's, it's, you feel really vulnerable when you're, when you're doing this, it, and, and it's, you would think, you bring up MacGruber, I do some crazy stuff in that, it, embarrassing stuff, uh, stuff that my family is very upset with me for doing, <laughs> and that stuff's easy, it's, it's fun and easy, and this being more, being, Playing a character kind of like yourself is is the really hard thing. It's 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 just you just feel like you're exposing your secrets or something, and and you know and, and other stuff you get to hide behind a character or you know if I have a mustache on I can do anything because <laughs> you just feel like oh that's not me that's the guy with the mustache but I did not have a mustache in this. Uh, the yes ma'am back. Uh, David brought up does he have Alzheimer's? I just wonder what the 
idea was for that character? The idea, the idea for Woody's character and his dementia. No, I mean, we just, I mean, in a general way, I don't remember people talking about it in a diagnostic fashion, but just that obviously he was older, he had a life of heavy drinking, his mind was rattled, and it went in various, you know, phases of clarity and then, you know, confusion. But I, I don't know if that corresponds to any clinical diagnosis of it dementia or, or, you know, Alzheimer. Um, so that's how, how I thought of it and that's how we discussed it. Um, what I want to say is, um, Ron, I hope you and Albert will keep bringing us movies like this and we'll keep saying it's the script, it's the script, it's the script. And if you watched the last sequence, when, when they change places in the car. The emotion that we bring to the scene is because we know what it means for Woody. But the emotion that the scene brings to us is his face. This movie is not all about the writing, it's also about your acting. So, thank you very much.